So family, that was very interested in, in educational as far as the crocodile pool. Chicken. You know, we're roots, culture, people, and you know, also na into nature connection. Okay, just coming in. Okay, come in, please. And we're gonna, now we're in the museum. Of the crocodile pool. This is the museum of the crocodile pool. It's a different museum also in Bali. So every setup has a different system. Oh, yeah, I want to see that. What the? It's all in English. You can read. I hope you enjoy this way. Yeah. You've got something to show to your friends, is it? Yeah. Anything you want to ask, just ask about it. That's not scary. That's the circumcision mask for you. The what? Circumcision mask for you. So he's the one that does it? No, no, he doesn't. But he, he's the one that protects the young ones in the village during the night time. It started his job. Uh, Twelve o'clock, you know, in the morning. Mm -hmm. He opened the door for the young ones. Mm -hmm. So he was the one that protects the young ones in the village during the night time. It started his job. And make very sad noise. Make and this night, sorry, this night will be like clapped together. They scare people. Right. People get wrong. Is it? Mandinka. Oh. Circumcision man. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a Mandinka thing. To protect the initiates from evil spirits and witches. Evil spirits are evil and other subtleties to fly or disappear from sight during performances. The dress is the bark of the flower tree. They usually carry two blunt cut cutlasses. Cut cutlasses. Cut yeah. cut yeah. cut yeah. Strikes one another while making esoteric noises at night. Now cutlass or machete depends machete, on yeah. or that's, machete that's depends what we on it. We call it cutlasses. It's machetes. And then, then they would do like they got these machetes like these, and they're like, ah! you see that they would not. So this right here, right? Is that the initiation? That's the, that's the boy. The boy that gets initiated yeah. into the circumcision. Yeah, you see all of these ones. One, right. two, three, By the four, dress. five, yeah, six, seven, eight. You only put the dress like that because you wouldn't put trousers in. Because you need to, you, you, you can't put a trousers because perhaps you, you get pained. But, do they, but, but you said, you got that many boys dressed as uh, for the ritual. Yeah. But they don't do them all in one night. They did them all in one night. Man, the doctors, they busy. Of course, yeah. Right. Very busy we, at that time. We, we, my, my style of circumcision, we were at 150. Oh, you went through it? I did it. You did it? Yeah. Well, I, I, went, I went it too. Well, I never did it. <laughs> I, I, went, I did it like, I'm thankful for in that. My, in my area, yeah. yes. so <laughs> some ladies bring their kids. Of yeah. course, yeah. And they we sleep at the booth for three months. Yeah. See, and in the West, they, they circumcise you when you're a baby. About two days. No, no, we are circumcised. You know, like when you take the circumcision, they have they are teaching you that's the place where they teach you how to live in the society. But how old are you by the time you get circumcised? Me, I was eleven years. Eleven years old. I was going to school. You know what happened? Take me from the school and then you have to be that's why I said in the uh, on the tree there, I say you have to be ten to be fifteen years old. You know the reason is that because 15. they ten to fifteen because they want to you to something. understand. The teaching. And the pain is part of that yeah. process? Yeah, that's what I said. The pain will last for two weeks. Oh, because really? at the moment, at the first day, they did it. Oh, so that's because I, I was part of 215 boys. When we came to the boats here, when we did, and when they do that, they're very, because they knew, they're so aware that there's going to be, there's going to be painful. So what they did first before they do it, they say, go and get your breakfast. Because when you, when you don't get a breakfast, you will not be able to eat the whole day because you're with the pain, you will cry. So you sleep like that, you know, you, they put a dress like this, so you hold the dress on the front like that. You don't want a dress to touch you. Because it hurts. Yeah, because it's hard, you, and you're walking. And you know what? There was nothing like Western I medicine. This doctor, they knew the herbs in the, at the trees, or herbs to use to heal you, to kill. 
that herbs, time. Yeah. yeah. So they would go every morning. The doctor would come, and with these herbs, he will wash, clean the herbs very clean, mm -hmm. and he would just clean you. And they would use these herbs, put it on you, and then like kind of a step in it there. And after two weeks, you are okay. All the pain goes, the wound is gone, then you are free. You can walk normal. You can dance. You know, just two weeks, you're gone. Everything is over. The medicine they use sometimes, you know, like here we use firewood for cooking. You know, this smoke will go out of the roof of the fire, uh, the house, it's the hot, the yeah. ceiling. So you just hit it, you see the, the dark, dark powder. The dark oh, powder. Dark powder so if they come in the morning, oh my God, this old man will just take a stick, put his cloth on the rabbit like this, mm -hmm. and warm water, and put it in the warm water, and, and start salt. cleaning it. And they put salt there. Put salt there, and start cleaning wow. it. After they take this powder. That's why we are always strong. That's, that's very interesting. Yes, and we are always strong. That's why we are Africans are very strong in that. Ooh, yeah. These are here. It's a family, it is a nice museum setup. This uh, you use during the war. It costs you maybe let's say three hundred uh, four hundred dollars to get a juju for protection of weapons. If somebody fire you at you, you never enter. Yeah. Yeah. You have juju so I get a knife and cut your hand your hand doesn't enter. You use the knife to cut yourself, don't enter. This is yes. uh, to, to make sure to understand that let me show you here. If you look here. Uh, well, guys, if you look here, guys, look, mm -hmm. uh, you can find out. And as I was saying to you, most of Africans were forced to go to war, but right. not, this is not their choice. Mm -hmm. So at the time, the parents of these young men go to the war have no choice and nothing to offer them but to give them duties like this. It is against the bullet, knife, anything that is iron, metal, you will not enter. Will not enter your so this, is help, this helps these soldiers in the war. 99.9% .9 of them came home alive. And the enemies were surprised. Why Africans are not dying? So much in the bush. Is it Africans? They say, and we always have a song for that. No liberty, no surrender. Africans never die. You know? Yeah. And that's why Africa become recognized. Say, say that again slowly. No retreat, no surrender. Oh, Africa okay. has never died. Oh, okay. okay. Because most of our people get these okay. jujus in there. Yes, uh, and it's, as you can see, it is collected from the World War II veteran. Mm. They used this to protect, protect charms against the bullets, the bullets. during the bomber mm. campaign. Amazing. That yeah, is something they proud of. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Believe me, I used to have this. sent them the bomber during World War II? Yeah. To fight against the Japanese? Japanese. They forced them. That's what I was saying there. It was not a World War II, it was a Western war, and they call it a World War because Africa had nothing to do with the war. Even the first World War. We are living peace and harmony in our backyard. They just come because they got the power and they grabbed heads and took them there. And they said World War II. And their history never written that Africa was in World War I and II. It's sad. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the last uh, part. Calabasas, green crabas, and then now. This should be the last portion, right? The museum. It is. That's the family. We look forward to seeing you here with us uh, next year. You see, um, calabasas were used. You see, the calabasas were used for containers, water containers, and food. <laughs> were used like a bowls and spoons, and during before the colonial days, because then we have no electricity. See, in every home at the time, you have one old woman who will be responsible to put water every morning. Oh, oh, and oh, what okay. you, you know because you know they you know the world women they care for they, they you know why because they care they care so much for their young generations 
So they don't mind even their age is up there. They still want to do things like that. Just to free their grandchildren. When they feel thirsty, they want to drink. That's they true. Run. Yeah. That's true. That's right. Even that's now. Right. Yeah, so we, we still do it. Yeah. <laughs> even now. Yeah. yeah. That's true. So that's what they do. So what they do is they, they have these things and they make holes like that and they put water there and these calabash will be inside there like this and when the women will clean all the place and they put water there and you see and that's what we covered and they took some rub and covered like this and they said nobody touch it leave it there 30 minutes one hour come back when you open it the very water cold. is very cold. Very like, cold. Like from yeah. the refrigerator. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's, That's impressive. Yeah. Now, quick question. This is this one piece of calabash, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what do you do with the food inside or the food inside? Yeah, if you want to do food inside, you have to cut it like that. You know, now it will not be like that. You have to open it. Then you get two out of these. Mm -hmm. Now it will be two bowls. Right. So you can put food inside, like how they do. No, no, what about the, the, the actual natural fruit or food that's inside of the no, 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 we, those are not eatable. Oh, it's not? No, you just clean those ones and throw them out. So if somebody eat it, they're poisoned? Of course, it might be poisoned. Oh, it, it is not poison to kill people. It's sour. But it's just sour and... Uh -huh. it's so it's not, it's not for nobody want to eat it. That's yeah. amazing. I didn't know calabash even grew that big. Yeah. So, so, so this was on... On tree? No, you have two kinds of calabash. You have calabash from the tree like that we saw. Yeah. And you have calabash that is just a, a like a plant. watermelon. This oh, one, goes on one, on yeah, this one, this one, that one just grow on the ground. Because like yeah, they wouldn't be able to. Yeah. yeah, that one is, and the tree wouldn't grow big like that. No. But this one that grow on the ground, these are the the bigger ones. They go down. And they they last. I mean, you you let them dry out and cut and empty out. Yeah. Calabash. Calabash. Musangi them. Yeah. I don't know what I'm not the World War II. No, not the World War II. No, but it's World War II. Now come to the history of Africa. You start from here, you go this way. That's an amazing museum. Yeah. That's why I figure you get a lot of guests. There's a lot of history and culture here. Yeah. Did you see? Did you see what I was saying? They were forced to go to war. You see, they, they set them on the line and you see the medical checking is happening. So if he has some health issue, they're gonna say, go get your clothes, go home. So those are medical feet. They say first, go. Go. You're going to go to war. Great job organizing all this information. That's my year. See, in 1944, this is what they do to Gambia, they do to Senegal, they do to Nigeria, Ghana, all over Africa. We are forced to go to war. So the people that invaded you yeah. were the ones that forced you. Exactly. Made you violent, Your family colonization it was no joke. Family. And you know, the saddest thing is, really the saddest thing is, see this one here. You see, the Japanese. When they cut the African soldiers in Burma, they killed them. But when they got Americans and British, they don't kill them. They just took them to prison. So our lives were worth receiving to the Japanese? Of course, yes. Yeah. That's why Dr. Ben says we have no friends. Rock on. That's what I'm talking about. You see, when they, got, when they see Africans, they kill them. But British, Americans go to prison. Say it again. When... When, in the war, when the Japanese cut African soldiers, they just kill them. But when they cut American, the white Americans, the villages, they don't kill them, they just take them to prison. Yeah, they, they like quite the so our life, our life which was nothing to even the Japanese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So not only the white people, to even the Asians. There you go, family. Wow. Okay, so here that's the, the last point. And uh, I am stopping here now saying thank you. It was a pleasure. If you want to go, so that's the end of me here. Thank you. It was a pleasure to meet you all. Thank you. Absolutely, my brother. Yes, man, very educational. Yeah. This World War One. Uh,
1916. Yeah. But it's a unique way how the museum was set up. You see, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. And then yeah. sometimes um, I didn't expect to see this in detail. Right. How and I, I didn't expect to, you know, experience some of the similar emotions behind African men being used to carry out the white man's agenda for war uh, during World War One and World War Two. You know, in the same way that I experienced um, uh, similar emotions in the slave castles, you know, at Gori and Cape Coast. Because, you know, it seems like wherever the white man went on the African continent, his exploitation of our people was, um, was of the most heinous and, uh, and egregious acts that you can't imagine, you know, that one human being could ever do to another. You know, so I was really um, impressed by that. It goes to me. It was written. <laughs> it was written. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Musa. Thank you. Thank you. Musa, my brother, thank look you. forward to connecting back with you next time. Yeah, for her. Yeah. Thank you for the rich issue. And we will encourage more people to, to honestly come All right. and things like that. Cause I really appreciate it. Yes, we're building a nice roots and culture tour in Senegal and the Gambia. That's good. And I really see. When I see you back in the Gambia again. Yeah, so all the documentation we take, we share them around the world. Yeah, and a pleasure. And we'll keep in touch with you. If you have a brochure or anything, we can take a brochure. No, thank you. The family and what you can see in the tropical paradise is one of my favorite trees, the coconut tree. And the information about the calabash is always just impressive and just amazing. You know, I mean, like we talk about family, everything that we need is on and in our continent. <laughs> yes, Abdul, you ready to roll out? Yeah. Yes, family. It's been nice, uh, you know. We spent some good amount of time here, got a lot of documentation for you. Because that's what we do. Live on Revolutionary Camp, but money to you, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.